Welcome to Teaching Tales. My name is Skywalker Storyteller, and every week I'm going to try and bring you a story or something about a story I tell, because storytelling art creates revelations of enlightening delight. And today I'm going to tell you one of my favorite stories about one of my favorite people. And here he is. His name is Coco Pelli. And next week, I'll give you a little bit more of a history of Coco Pelli. But today, we're just going to hear the story of how he became well known. Now, it is said in the very, very ancient of times in the Southwest, some say in Hopi land, some say in Mexico or southern Arizona, because many of the southwestern nations of Native Americans claim Cocopelli as their own, as you'll see by the many stories he has. But this is a story they all share. For you see, Cocopelli was born to a loving mother and father, and they loved him, even though his legs were very, very long and his back was bent and it never straightened out. And the other children and even some adults, as people can be mean, would make fun of him and laugh at him, even though Coco Pelli was a very sweet and loving little boy. So as he grew older, the elders gave him a very fancy and colorful feathered headdress. So Coco Pelli would think that people were laughing at his Kwawiki. But Coco Pelli was very smart. And his feelings got hurt so much at people laughing at him. So one day, when he was feeling very, very alone and very sad and very worthless and ugly, he left the village and went and climbed up a mountain and found himself a little cave and started to cry his little heart out. Now he didn't know that up above, Grandmother Spider and Coyote were doing some very important work. Coyote held in his mouth a bag filled with stars and Grandmother Spider was picking those stars out one by one and placing them very carefully in the sky, making beautiful designs. A dipper here, a bear there, astrological signs. And as she was engaged in her work, she began to hear sobbing and she couldn't believe it was Coyote, so she turned around and said, cut, and stop because Coyote wasn't crying. He couldn't sob. His mouth was filled with a strap holding the stars. And the crying just continued and it broke Grandmother Spider's heart. So she wove her web and descended and stopped when she saw the cave where the sound was coming from. And she walked into the cave and saw this little boy just crying his heart out. And she said, Little boy, why are you crying so much? <laughs> because nobody loves me because I'm ugly. And I don't have any friends and they laugh at me because I can't straighten up my back and because my legs are long. <laughs> Grandmother Spider walked over to him and gently stroked his face and looked into his big brown eyes and she said, Oh, little boy, don't cry. I can see that you are a very loving person. So I will give you something that will make everyone love you and see your giving heart. So using her magic powers, Grandmother Spider wove 
a beautiful wooden flute just for Coco Pelli. And she gave him the flute and she said, this flute is just for you. When you play it, the music will be so beautiful. It will make the heavens cry and they will bring rain to the earth and make the ground fertile and many vegetables and food will grow. And then people will see that you are special and they will love you for the gifts you bring and the beautiful music. And now, Coyote was standing beside her because he was curious too and felt alone being up there, so he had climbed down Grandmother Spider's web she had woven. And so Grandmother Spider picked up that bag from Coyote's back and she put it on Coco Pelli's back and said, I'm giving you a bag of stars. And sometimes after you play and all the young maidens and young men are gathered around, just reach in and throw up a few stars. And those that fall down will strike some of those young married maidens and they will bring new life to earth. Here, play your flute. Now, Coco Pelli had never played a flute before, so he tried. And he saw he could play the flute. And he was so happy. And he said, Oh, thank you, Grandmother Spider. I love this flute. Well, you go on now. Go back and play the flute as you go back into the village. And see, people will not notice your back or your long legs. They will only hear your beautiful music. And so Coco Pelli climbed down that mountain, carefully holding his flute. And once he got back down, he started playing as he walked to the village. And it was just as Grandmother Spider said. The heavens cried because of the beauty of his music. And the fields were rich and fruitful with food. And every now and then he'd throw up some stars. And the young women would bear children. And so it is that for over thousands of years, Coco Pelli, has become known and is a symbol for abundance, kindness, and gratitude. Now this story is done. So remember it. Tell your friends about it. And next week we'll learn a little bit more about Coco Pelli. <laughs>